Good afternoon and welcome. I am Celeste and this is Celeste Creates and this is floss tube number 17. Um, welcome. Welcome to all of you who are returning subscribers and viewers. I am so glad you are back to join me. Um, you're what makes uh, doing this so much fun. And if you're new to my channel, I thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope that you will find some fun and some inspiration and uh, just have a great time as we sit here and chat. So it is, like I said, floss tube number 17. It is Thursday, March 18th. So I guess technically it would have been better if I'd done number 17 yesterday on the 17th for St. Patrick's Day, but my normal day to film is on Thursday. So, here I am. Even so, I usually form, uh, film first thing in the morning, and uh, but this is spring break, and uh, we had plans this morning, and so I am doing it this afternoon. It's about 4.15, the kids are downstairs, occupied, I think. <laughs> and I'm sitting up here in my sewing corner, and looking out the window, there's a window right here. This is my ironing board. Uh, it's like a desk with my ironing board on it. And uh, this is my second story window looking out onto the backyard. Today's a gorgeous day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're rainy and muggy and gray, and today is absolutely perfect. The temperature is cooler, the sky is completely blue, and uh, it's just fun to look out at the beautiful day and um, see that the trees are starting to get leaves. So, um, just so thankful for this beautiful spring weather. So, because before you know it, it will be really hot. <laughs> so we try and enjoy it while we can. So, um, I don't have a ton to show you today, but I thought I'd go ahead and make sure I did a video this week, because it has been about, it has been two weeks since my last video. I did a quilty tube video last week, so it feels like I was just here. Um, but this is um, two weeks since my last floss tube video. So thank you for everybody who um, came to watch my Quilty Tube number three. That's what I've decided to call it. And I think I had somebody ask either in my comments on YouTube or um, maybe on Instagram, but had asked, oh, I like that. Can I borrow a Quilty Tube if I film one? I'm like, sure. I, as far as I know, I don't know if I coined the term or I heard it somewhere else, but I'm calling mine Quilty Tube. So yes, um, borrow away. <laughs> I have no proprietary, uh, you know, rights to that. So um, it's a lot of fun. Those are my kids downstairs. I think they're playing a video game together. So they're occupied. Um, <laughs> apparently this is going to be a rambly one. Um, so thanks for joining me for the Quilty Tube. That was a lot of fun to film, and y'all have left me so many um, wonderful comments. It's been really fun. Um, and I've tried to answer some of those comments. I've had a lot of people ask if I would do um, a video about free motion quilting and quilting my own quilts on my machine here at home. And just let you know, if you did watch that Quilty Tube, yes, I'm getting that. Um, that is in process, so I have, um, Two quilts ready to go. I was ambitious and thinking I wrote on my to-do list for spring break I'm gonna quilt two quilts. Well I got two of them pinned on Monday and that's as far as I've gotten. But quilting for me is something that um, because this game room over here actually also is um, where the kids mostly do school. Um, so that especially in the mornings, they're used to having me work on something over here. So, you know, getting them pinned, that's something I need to do downstairs and it takes me a little while. I gotta have some space. And um, so even next week, once they're back to doing school, that's something I can work on over here and it goes pretty fast. So, um, but yes, um, a video about free motion quilting on your home machine is um, in the works. So, um, but this one, Today is about um, cross stitch, right? That's why we're here. Although I'm, I'm totally laughing because um, as I filmed this, I just really didn't have time. You know, a lot of times I have this workspace behind me here. My sewing machine is here. I have another table um, just to put things on. And then my ironing board is on top of a big desk. So it's a flat ironing board. And um, so oftentimes I use this as a work table 
and this is where I set up my camera to film. And uh, so yesterday I was had been watching a Lori Holt video and um, her latest Sew Your Stash series, I think, where she was doing the um, quick um, broken dishes quilt block and I got all inspired and so I'm up here sorting all my all my sh all my scraps are technically sorted they're down here I'll have to do another video about that um but my one and a half inch squares have not been sorted so I have them but they've all just been in this old um you know glass refrigerator dish and um so now I'm kind of sorting them by color uh so you can kind of see that here. But, sorry about that. That was Douglas Doodle barking at who knows what. Anyway, my table here is um, covered in one and a half inch squares. So I'll insert a video here because I just think it's kind of funny. Um, but they're good. We can we can still do a floss too with them here. So I have an FFO and a couple of other little things I made and some progress on my whips to show you and a tiny bit of haul, but um, not a ton today. I've been busy. I stitch every day. Maybe only one day I haven't stitched, but anyway, spring break. Spent Monday doing some stitching and sewing and um, we haven't been out to do a whole lot, um, but this weekend is my daughter's big Cinderella performance, so we're excited about that. Keep her in your prayers um, that that goes well. <coughs> so anyway, let's get on to the good stuff. So let me start this portion of the video by saying that... Um, Is it Crafty Cottage Stitches? I am so bad. I really should look these things up before I um, before I start. But Jeanette and Heather, Crafty Cottage Stitches. I'll put it down here. Um, I can think of their, their Instagram names. Anyway, they're all about strawberries this month or for however long. And um, I was watching their floss tube and I got all inspired. Um, I love strawberry things. I love, uh, it's just one of my favorite little themes. And so they're doing a bunch of strawberry themed stuff. And so they set up a hashtag that is strawberry social, S E W, uh, social. And I'll put that hashtag here. And I decided, of course, I wanted to join in the fun. And so I started. I already have some things up downstairs that are strawberries. I have um, a couple of mini quilts. I have some, a couple of um, vintage pieces that are strawberries. And um, I thought, oh, what fun to put together on my island, my tiered tray, and actually decorate it with strawberries. So I pulled out the strawberry things that I had. And let's see, I went to Hobby Lobby and bought, found one little sign that had something to do with a berry, with strawberries. And then, um, Heather and Jeanette had shown the um, strawberry salt and pepper shakers. I, sh I should have brought those upstairs. Um, that are kind of in the spring section right now at Hobby Lobby, and I had to get those. So I had those things, and I, I've always had, i always made little strawberries. Um, and so I have those on there anyway. So I, I kind of got all hooked into the strawberries. So the first thing I made on Monday was um one of my big strawberries so um somebody had asked for a tutorial and i'll think about it maybe i'll do one um but i still like to sell these so it's really not that hard um so i made my giant strawberry and put him i kind of embroidered some little stitches on top and added a button and so he's my great big fat strawberry so he's on my tiered tray and then using um I think I have most of Lori Holt's set sets of so simple shapes and I think I've said before I know I said it in my quilty tube last week that I use those so simple shapes for just all kinds of things so I've made quilts with them but I find uses for these shapes all the time 
And so I had the fruit salad um, set of Lori Holt shapes. And so I used uh, the strawberry and the top of the strawberry to cut some red felt. And I just did some little, I could have taken longer and done Lazy Daisy or French Knots, but I just didn't feel like it. So I made uh, a felt strawberry and did a blanket stitch at the top up here and uh, kind of put that over and glued it on and put some little jute there for the top. So that is on my um, tiered tray. So I made those on Monday morning, I think. And then that afternoon, I have had this chart sitting in my, in my basket over here from pretty early on. I think it was one of the first things I bought when I first got back into cross stitch in 2019. And it is called um, Strawberry House by Little House Needleworks. Super cute and small. Uh, it calls for some DMC and then a couple of classic color works. And she, there were some like beads and buttons you could add to it, but I, I, I only had the pattern. I didn't have the buttons and I'm not really into the button thing and the beads. So um, it tells you in the chart, you know, what to stitch if you're not gonna use the buttons and the beads. So I started that on um, Monday afternoon on a small piece of 40 count. So it's really tiny and cute. Um, 40 count R&R &R espresso and um, here it is. I finished it up this morning. I finished stitching it last night. And then um, my friend April, uh, I showed it to her and she was laughing and she said, well, she says, I'll be up early. I know you'll have it FFO'd by then. <laughs> and I thought, well, I kind of wasn't planning on it because we were going to go to the park with some friends. But then this morning I was just laughing and I'm like I've got some extra time and now because she said that I got to make her laugh and actually get it FFO'd early this morning so I did that this morning and so 40 count R&R &R espresso this is a piece of Lori Holt um, little gingham that was in one of her lines oh I'm so sorry um, that was in one of her lines of fabric that I have over there in my right there <laughs> it's hard to do in my baskets and um, so I just added that and then this little trim that I got either at Walmart or Joann's I don't remember it's backed in some floor um, cute little pink floral and I put a heart kind of looks funky if you can maybe you can't see it but I was kind of zipping along and put the heart on the back and then turned it over and realized it was it was on upside down so I redid it I popped it off real quick and redid it so that is strawberry house and um, I it called for four DMC's and I used all through all four of those and then it called for three over dyed and I used one of those I had well really kind of funny because I was putting the colors away <laughs> last night and it called for caterpillar for the brown for the roof and the border and I was like, I don't have Caterpillar. I had Caterpillar. <laughs> anyway, so I just used the DMC substitute for Caterpillar for the brown. And then there was a green uh, bean sprout. I didn't have bean sprout, so I just did the DMC for that. And then I did do um, the call for pink for the house, which is a oh, just an awesome, awesome color called Ladybug by Classic Color Works. And then I think the red it called for a DMC 3777, but just for fun, I put in the, um, I, put, I used pomegranate. It wasn't very many stitches, probably didn't need to do it, but it was such a pretty color. So that is my cute little stitchy um, strawberry finish. So cute, love it. So while I, um, I don't know if I'll do any more, I found um, found this kind of um, it's just you know a vintage napkin with a crochet a red crochet trim so I might next week I might I have a bunch of vintage um, embroidery patterns um, so I might trace a, a strawberry cute strawberry with the face on it 
um, on here and maybe um, embroider that and then I could kind of, I don't know, sit it in the tray or something. So that might be something I do. And then I think, I'm going to have to think about this one because I'm kind of ready to get back to my samplers. Um, it's fun to pull out a small and work on that. Um, and that one was great. It went really fast. Um, but I'm ready to get back to my samplers. But I did think of stitching this one right here. This is Agnes Platt's Strawberry Sampler from Blackbird Designs. And I do eventually want to do this big sampler. That's the antique. Um, but I thought, well, it might be fun to stitch up that but I don't know I might have enough stuff on my um on my tray um maybe save that for next year but um anyway so that was another idea I had that I could do that but we'll see I might be ready to move back on to my samplers so that's my strawberry stuff and I encourage you to go check out their floss tube video whichever one it is about the strawberry social <clears throat> and uh, join in make some strawberry things um, I may still make a project bag I haven't decided yet but I don't have any more zippers right now so I ordered some anyway so that was my couple things I made and now I guess we will look at whoops all right so after my last video two weeks ago I had shown you oops that's not it I had shown you that I had the chart um, from, pause, hold on, it's right here. I had this chart, AH to EE -E by Kathy Barrick. This came out last year at market and I loved it. And I had started it on a 36 count vintage country mocha with um, stitching two over two with a blue thread. <clears throat> and I absolutely love that Quaker sampler. I think it's beautiful. It's not huge. It's just beautiful. I love the color that um, I had chosen. But I told you in the last video, I was like, I think, you know, I'm restarting it. And I may have already restarted it by the time I filmed. So anyway, I did start on it. And I did make a lot of progress. And I am absolutely loving it. Um, forgive me for keeping reaching behind me. I'm a little unprepared. So yes, I did restart this on um, 40 count old weeks sand and which I really enjoyed, I've got a mess. I enjoyed working on this 40 count um, and it was good. I can do it. I'm really excited. I, I feel like I can do the 40 count. I'm not intimidated by it anymore. But this one required a little, this was a little more work for me. Um, to do than a 36 and um, I feel a little faster and more um, it's just I'm getting used to it I'm sure I'm still just getting used to it so I can do it and I enjoyed this this was not hard I didn't regret it <laughs> not at all it was an enjoyable stitch but I did start um, yeah this oh that's not that's the wrong thing no wonder I'm looking at it funny okay I did start this on old weeks sand I restarted it it's a 40 count and it really does um, for me it feels like a, I think I said this before a really good transition from 36 to 40 and I feel really comfortable this one doesn't feel quite the same so I have been stitching away on this and absolutely loving how it's turning out so it's funny because I think I'm at least as far as I was um, when I restarted it. I had the tree up here done. I didn't do the tree. I've moved down here instead just because I wanted to do something I hadn't done already. But I had not finished this, so that's all done. So that's my restart. I think it's beautiful. I love the color. I love the blue on it. And the blue I'm using is so pretty. I just love the color. Um, and the variegation in the color. This is Classic Color Works Wavy Navy. Mm, that's so pretty. Look at that. So I'm really loving that. So I worked on that. Excited to get back to that. <clears throat> uh, let's see. 
Then, so I worked on that for a couple days, and then on Sunday, <clears throat> no, Saturday, or Sunday, one of those, I um, started a new project with my friend Bonnie and another friend at the Naughty, Naughty, not Naughty, <laughs> Naughty, like a knot in your shoelace, um, the Naughty Oak Tree, I'll put that below as well. <laughs> um, we started um, the chart, the Mighty Acorn, and I think it's Acorn to Oak Sal, I'll put that here as well. So the three of us started that and we're working on that. So yeah, I started that after I filmed the floss tube. And so pretty. And here's all my colors. I'm using all the called for over dyed cottons and they are kind of messy right now, aren't they? Aren't they pretty? Lovely. I think when I started it, I was only missing cocoa. And I got that this week. So now I can um, do a few of the parts that were in cocoa that I couldn't do. So that is the call for over dye. And I am doing this on a lovely, lovely piece of 36 count ren. I pictured this plus. This is my first piece of ren that I have used or per, first piece of picture this plus that I've used. And it's beautiful and I love it. I think Wren is the called for um, uh, linen in the chart. So it's not a huge piece, it's really um, great size. Um, i trying to think, I have it here. I don't, have my, I don't have the book, but I have the chart. I have my working copy. I don't have it written down, but anyway, it is, um, I hope I've still got my needle in there. Um, it's a lot of fun to stitch. I'm really loving those leaves. They're so pretty. So now I've got, this is the inner border, and I couldn't do, um, I couldn't do the outer border because it was done in cocoa. And so I've been, like I said, I've been waiting for the cocoa. So... It it makes that there's the picture. It make cocoa is the main part of this outer border. So I just started on the inner border and have been working on what I could without the cocoa. So really, I guess I'm right about here, kind of over in here with the leaves. So it's not that much bigger. It is 119 by 185, so not bad at all. And that's called Mighty Acorn, and it is out of the new winds of autumn so that has been super fun to stitch on I really like that a lot so that I worked on that I did the strawberry house and then I think the only other thing I'm laughing because I got one and a half inch squares and stuff everywhere they were sticking one and a half inch squares sticking to my shirt so you know here we'll just add a few for Okay. All right, my other, I didn't realize I have another stitch along, and that is with my friend April from April Heirlooms <clears throat> on Instagram, and she and I are doing the Salute to Abigail chart from the um, Sweet Land of Liberty book by Blackbird Designs, and so she and I started that together at the beginning of the month, beginning of, well, of February, not March. And we've been working on that little bits at a time. I think we have some plans to make sure we put the stitches in together. So this is 36 count. I left a needle in this one too. I've been all over the place. This is 36 count raw natural linen, linen by Zweigart. And these are the four colors that I chose myself. I showed those, I think, in uh, both, maybe both of my last videos. But I love that red. I love that flower pot in the middle. It is so much fun. I love flower pots. That is, oh, love it. I love the border. So that won't take much longer to get that finished up. So I think that'll for sure be done before uh, any patriotic holidays that come up. I guess the first one would be Memorial Day at the end of May. And then here again, 
I can show you my colors right here. So there's my four colors that I chose instead of using the silks that were called for. They're all weak style works. Yeah. Michael's Navy. Grits. Turkish Red. And Blue Jeans. They're so pretty. And somebody I think had asked me if they could, would I mind if they copied with these colors? And of course not. I just stood there in the shop and picked out what looked like um, it matched the picture. So go right ahead. <laughs> Have fun and make it beautiful. So that's been a lot of fun to work on and I've got, I got several days in on that. So yeah, here's my project bag. Can you see the one and a half inch squares? <laughs> this can be a mess when I'm done. Oh well. All right. The other, oh, there's another one. The other thing I worked on this week is my red sampler. And I can insert a picture of that, what it looks like here. I don't have a color picture. Um, Lettre, Lettre Carmine, red letters. And I think I told you a little bit about um, finding this chart last time on my floss tube. It is a um, reflet, reflet de soie chart. And um, I, f I don't even remember how I actually happened upon it. Um, maybe I was on Pinterest looking at red samplers. But I found it and fell in love with it. And I thought, well, that's the one I want to do. And so I started looking for it and I found it. And I think I could get it from one place here in the US and that was fine. I was pretty much, I was ready to order it. But I did a little more Googling and I found that it was available as a six part series in the Gift of Stitching magazine from 2010. And so I was able to buy digital to buy the digital copies of that year's magazine. So I think for $12, I got all of 2010's magazines at the Gift of Stitching PDF. Um, so I have all 12 of those. And then in those 12 are the six issues that they did this particular chart as a six part series for um, that magazine. So instead of buying the chart itself, I bought that year's worth of magazines. So I got that chart the one chart I wanted plus there's other beautiful things in those magazines and so I was able just to print those off um, but it is a gorgeous chart I love it I love the letters I just love everything about it so I worked some more on that and I chose for my red because I was enjoying in salute to Abigail I was enjoying this Turkish red so much um, I decided that that was going to be my red for um, the sampler. So there's my Turkish red. It's just beautiful. I love it. It just makes me happy. <laughs> so I am stitching this on 36 count Zweigart Light Sand, which is a really pretty color. That looks good right there. It's called Light Sand. So I have made it all the way across the top. I don't think there's any border. So that's as wide as it's gonna be. And then I started working down that first page. And oh, it's so much fun. Look at those letters. I love those big, you know, our cursive or fancy alphabets there. They are beautiful. They're both so much fun to stitch. So that, oh, I'm gonna have to really stitch on that again here soon because it's just beautiful so i think that's all i've been working on and i'm not going to cut the video because you're used to me reaching back here now um i am um, i could get i could do a segment on haul but i really didn't have a whole lot um because i didn't need to buy anymore <laughs> so i think i've bought some threads mostly that's been what I've bought um, and so then I really just haven't bought a whole lot anyway I'm a rambler today uh, I did buy this really pretty I got a nice what is that I got a nice fat half I think 
27 by 36 of the 36 count Swigart light mocha. You just really see me using that a lot. It's such a pretty color. So I got that from 123 Stitch. And I got that's where I got the cocoa. And then, oh, phooey. You get to see me roll. <laughs> My friend uh, picked up, April picked up two other colors for me because she lives close to the shop on the other side of town. And she had a chart she wanted to send me. And so she sent me. Uh, actually, a partial strand, oh, right there, there's the other one, of one of her colors to use, but she sent me this fun chart to borrow, the basket of cherries. I think I have wanted to do this one, gosh, from the very beginning. So she loaned me this chart, so I'm super excited about that, and then while she was at the stitching shop, she got me two colors that I needed for that walnut and cider mill brown. So I think next time I want to do a small, I might pull that one up and do that because that's a lot of fun. And really, I think that's all the whole. I got a quilt book. And I don't know that I got anything else. Um, so anyway, that is what I have. Now, as far as plans go, I need to look in my little notebook. I keep a... I keep a spiral notebook right here and I just I think I've showed you before I just use it to write down ideas and um, measurements for things that I make and then I also at the beginning of the year I made I kind of looked at how many whips I had and what were they and kind of sort of loosely scheduled out when I wanted to work on them um, so I had to do a little shifting I had originally planned to finish Consider the Lilies this month, but I'm just not going to do that. I was feeling pressured and pushed by myself, not by anybody else, but by myself to make a deadline, and I don't always do well with deadlines, um, so I'm not going to finish that, maybe by the end of the year. I'm just not going to give myself a, a deadline. It will get done. So, I kind of need to look at April, but I have already kitted Miss Lucy Calcutt, so... Oh. I hate to start something new, but <laughs> that might be something I'll start in April. And then, actually, I have a couple other whips I ought to pull out and work on. Maybe um, Anne Ariel, which is a GGR chart, and then Manor at Quaker Hill. Both of those I have started that I might pull out and work on those. But, you know, sometimes you, you make some plans, but, you know, you just... I, I want to work on the things that I feel like are um, calling to me at that time and um, so I'm really ready to get back to some samplers and working on those so I may just I've got several whips in my basket downstairs and I've actually been really enjoying each one of those and so maybe it's not time to to switch out and do something else um, I just keep working on what I've got down there until I really feel like I'm ready to start another new one. So, um, those are kind of some loose plans. Um, but other than that, I don't think I have a whole lot else to share today. Um, I'm ready to get back outside. It is so beautiful. Um, I get to go out on a date tonight. Um, I think we're still going to pick up dinner and maybe eat it in the car, but, um, I don't know that we've been on a eating out date in quite a while so I'm excited oh yeah I'm going out with my husband that's him we will say sometimes yeah she's going out with her old boyfriend so I'm going out with my old boyfriend <laughs> he happens to live in the same house so doing that and like I said we got Cinderella this weekend my oldest son is coming home again to see Cinderella and we're super excited and um just loving the spring weather and all things spring. Planted a basil plant and a tomato and uh, trimmed back all my bushes that froze and I think they're all going to be okay. Maybe not the uh, mandevilla. I think it's more like a hibiscus and so that might not survive but all the weeds are doing really well and they have survived quite well. So that and I may get on this afternoon and look at David Austin Roses. I am um, I've kind of always bought Jackson and Perkin roses, 
that's kind of what my mom always bought and she was she just had beautiful roses um, but Lori Holt loves David Austin roses and I wanted to buy one last year but I think I got it in too late and so let me look this afternoon and see if I can buy me a David Austin rose and um, get that planted here soon so anyway I hope you are having a fabulous middle of March and um, we're doing great we were working our way through Lent to prepare for Easter and next week we'll be back at school and um, so we are just thankful and blessed and um, God is so good and I just uh, I love to see the ways that he is working in my life and my kids lives and um, anyway we're just we're blessed we're really blessed and so I will close with that and I pray you have a wonderful couple of weeks and I will see you in two weeks hopefully for another floss tube and then also be looking for a um, another quilty tube soon with a little bit of information on free motion quilting so thanks for joining me and I will I'll see you soon